Hi, welcome to the bathtub, where when you hear this theme song, and we stop it incredibly quick because we're afraid of getting sued, you know we're kind of a harking back to some of those those glory days of the, the tech, the high-tech version of the bathtub. We're now in the, the non-tech, the post-tech decade, which is just like the pre-tech decade, only it comes later when we have no tech at all. Um, everything that was filmed, that was that tape was from an eight-track tape deck. We're filming this with eight-millimeter camera, and actually, um, there's something else we're filming it with, but I forget what it is. Uh, an eight-track tape deck, and, and oh yes, some old Polaroid, an old, old Polaroid Instamatic. So we're not doing any of the high glossy, you know, super computer stuff anymore. But we did find a way to get uh, Gene Vincent in there without getting sued. I certainly hope. And that just that song always means one thing. It's time for New Bopalula. The always popular with me. Whenever I say it, our, something's popular about this show, I mean it's with, with me. I like doing it because I don't have to prepare anything, and I get it clear off my desk. So these are all this is new books that came in. People sent them to me for one reason or another. Um, sometimes I'm trying. I'm always. I get books that I want to review, and so sometimes I, I don't get a chance to review them, or they just people send them to me. And I don't know anything about them. This I feel kind of guilty and, and not guilty at the same time by Tachyon Publications. They're a really cool. Uh, publisher of, of contemporary SF and fantasy. I don't know. I haven't read any of their books since they did Tom Dish's books uh, a decade ago. But um, they seem like really smart people, and I'm going to read some of these books eventually. But it's going to be a while. This is called Neom by Lavi Tidhar. I'm pronouncing the name wrong. I'm sorry. She's a she, He or she is a... Uh, um, they won the British Science Fiction... British Fantasy and World Fantasy Award-winning authors. They won those three things. So it sounds like they're British. And uh, that's all I know about them, except this is a novel from the world of Central Station. So Central Station may be a very successful novel. And I don't know anything about it, but it looks kind of cool. It's coming out from Tachyon Press, and we like Tachyon Press. Um, here's one of our standards. We really like the Library of America. You see I have piles of them up there on the shelves. Um, they're kind of cool, particularly with someone like Gary Snyder. This just came in today. Um, I'm not a big Beat fan, and I can't decide if I'm going to keep this or not. I like Snyder's stuff, okay, uh, but I'm not, I just, I don't know, I just, the thing about the Beats always puts me off, and I don't know if I'll ever read it. So I have to debate, uh, since no one would let me review it, I'm going to, uh, uh, I don't know if I'm going to keep this, but it's a beautiful volume. And what's cool about the Library of America is, especially with poetry, you know, he's got like 15, 20 books of poetry over over 40, 50 years of life, and they're all in one volume. And they're usually published in their original volumes, which I think is really important. Yes, this one is published in many of its original volumes. And then there'll be sometimes letters and essays and so forth. And there's a brand new one, Gary Snyder. If you're interested in the beach, you're interested in Gary Snyder, an important American poet for sure. This also came in. I'm... I no one will let me do this to review, but I I might keep this. I like Maxine Hong Kingston. I haven't read her since I was in high school, and I did read The Woman Warrior, which is the memoir of I, I read this when I was sixteen or seventeen, the memoir of her mother, and I think she's raised in Chinatown in San Francisco, but I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But the mother's some weird Chinese woman. I guess they call them tiger moms now, but the women Chinese women as you I can tell you. Being married to one are pretty intense. They're pretty intense people. They're they're great, lovely, nice, intelligent people, but they're intense. And her mother sounded pretty intense. So uh, and she used to tell these fabulous stories of all these old mythologies and, and, and legends and stuff. That's the in Chinese mythology and leg, legends is amazing. Some of incredible stuff. Um, in fact, they're redoing a new. They're doing a new translation of Monkey from Penguin which I don't think I have a copy, but I'll talk about it if I ever get one. Kingston, Maxine Hong Kingston. I think I'm probably going to keep that. I might try to reread some of these. Uh, we talked a bit about this new Radium series. It's called... It's a weird series. It's called the uh, Radium Age series. And this is one called by Pauline Hopkins. And she was an Afro-American journalist. And it is it is a... It's... A, supposed to be a very interesting novel about kind of a, a black internationalist future. I have not read it. They try to compare it to the Black Panther comics. It has, I mean, I mean it, it looks pretty interesting. It looks like a pretty interesting uh, futurish, futurish version of of Afro American life and African life, um, written in the. I don't know when this was written, but um, in in the beginnings of the century. 
1903 this was published. Anyway, they have these kind of cool covers, and I don't know if this is good. I haven't read it, um, but I'm going to definitely put that up on my shelf with my other ones because I have been reading those series as they come along. The problem with the new Bapalula is I forget which I told you about. We do a lot. We love Hi we love uh, Hippocampus Press and S.T. Joshi, one of our favorite editors, and, and we love Arthur Mackin, who was kind of I, I became a fan of Arthur Mackin um, simply because they started republishing his work, and uh, I loved I, I loved what I read. And he wandered all over the London that I love in the at the end of the nineteenth century, and reminded me so much of my 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 youthful love of, of London. And anyway, this is called Hieroglyphics. It's some of his weird metaphysical uh, uh, discussions of literature and what, what, what we get from literature and the mythology of literature and why it's important to us. And it has a lot of other essays that are harder to get. And then it also has a good introduction, obviously, as usual, by the great S.T. Joshi who's, and, the, and the people at Hippocampus Press who are bringing all this wonderful stuff available. And it's fairly inexpensive, and it's a nice cover, nice copy, isn't it? So that's I'm going to definitely keep that because I have pretty much a growing stack of Mackin, who I, I love. Um, this, I don't know. I wanted, I wanted to review this as well, but I think I'm not going to be able to get to review it. It's coming out in England, and it may be coming out in America, but it's a, it's a th Japanese thriller, and it's by Seiko Matsumoto, Tokyo Express. They compare it to George Simenon, and this book was published in 1950 when it won a, an important uh, Japanese uh, th thriller award. Uh, it's a, it's well known in, in Japan, and I believe this is its first translation into English. So Tokyo Express, if you're interested in Japanese thrillers, um, I'm definitely keeping that one, and I'm going to try to keep on it. Here's one. This is the this is the UK version. I think I have both the UK version and the American version. They're reissuing this novel I read when I was in my teenage years too, called I Never Promised You a Rose Garden, which is about a young girl who's Who's being who's being drawn off into a fantasy life, which at the time they described it as she was had a she had a schizophrenia, but I think in retrospect I don't think it's schizophrenia, but it is a notion of being drawn off into a fantasy world, very similar to Arthur Mackin's work, uh, especially the great uh, Arthur Mackin novel, which the title escapes me at the moment. But uh, um, I loved this book when I was a kid. I think young people would love this book. I think people of any age would love the book, but it was particularly entrancing to young people in my in my generation, uh, men and boys and girls. So I mean, it's gone back into print. Joanne uh, Greenberg and I'd read other novels of hers too. I I think this she's a wonderful writer. What I read of hers, okay, when I was again 16, 17. Um, we we're fans of the Ravana Review here. It's published somewhere in Charlottesville or no, is it Charlottesville? Where the hell is this guy? He's, yeah, Charlottesville, Virginia. I got something right. Um, and his name's Robert Boucheron, and he published a couple of our stories uh, last year, and they published one of our bathing buddies, uh, Harris Coverley's story, not long ago. And he's really doing something kind of exciting with a, I think it's quarterly. Um, it's black and white, kind of black and white uh, literary magazine with illustrations and, and photography, and, and uh, he, gets, he, gets a, he gets some interesting stuff in here. I haven't read the new issue, but... You know, check out the Ravana Review. I'm sure you can buy it online. Here's another another one of the wonderful Library of Americas, the Fitzgerald. I'm surprised they haven't done Fitzgerald up till now. This They're not going to do a complete Fitzgerald, obviously. I think they're sort of doing a couple, of, one of his short story collections, The Great Gatsby, and then there's a lot of his essays, some of his essays, which I kind of have to keep this, I think, because some of these essays and some of the uncollected stories in here I don't think are available elsewhere. I'm not sure. It does have a big, big chunk of uncollected stories, and I don't think they've been published in the other version, other editions of uncollected stories. So I don't know. I may have to keep this one. I'm a big Fitzgerald fan. We have to put him in the All Bathtub Hall of Fame soon, and I love his short stories. I would love Fitzgerald's short stories. Great Gatsby? Eh. I kind of... I kind of had my fill of the Great Bats. We've listened to it for years, it's, but uh, I, one of my all-time favorite novels is *Tender as the Night*. It's one of the great, great American novels. So, uh, if you want to read Fitzgerald, that's a nice addition to do it with. I don't remember if we talked about this. Sorry, what, but but it's sitting on my shelf, so I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna maybe I'll get move it somewhere so I don't mention it again. But I, I like the Delmarva Review. Look at that beautiful. They do these beautiful editions once a year. *Labor of Love* by Wilson Wyatt and a bunch of other uh, bookish people 
and they do poetry, stories, some essays, and they get some good people in here. I think, is Ronan Keating in here? Did I just see? I don't remember. No. Um, anyway, people you know and people you don't know are in here. And um, they do they do lovely once a year volumes. You should definitely check them out. Here's another. It's another one from Tachyon. I don't know anything about it except it's called a bird verse novel. I don't know what that means. The author R. B. Lemberg is a queer bi gender immigrant from Eastern Europe. That's a lot of bases there. Their bird verse novella, The Four Profound Weaves, was a finalist for the Nebula, Ignite, Locus, and World Fantasy Awards. Okay, so. Um, New writer, sort of an interesting background, and I know nothing about this book except the unbalancing, nice cover, fantasy, um, uh, Tachyon by the smart people at Tachyon uh, Publishers. And, oh, here's the here's the American version, out as a classic, I Never Promised You a Rose Garden. One of my favorite memories of reading as a kid, I couldn't put it down, about the way this girl is drawn off into this this fantasy world. Okay, happy bathing. That's our new Bopalula. I can clear my shelves off a bit, and we'll, we'll be back soon. I'm pretty sure we're going to have that 3,000th episode, the, the pure pixelation. It's going to be utter. It's going to be a bathtacular, uh, bathtabulous uh, parade of pixels. We're going to have techniques you've never seen before in a video that's 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 produced on an old Commodore computer. Okay, take care. <laughs>